Before Amazon or eBay, car owners had this. It's a book of car parts and accessories from 1964. It's full of all kinds of old, weird, and sometimes kind of smart products that you could order for your car. So I went online and tracked down a bunch of these old products, and today, we're gonna actually use them. I gotta shave and make my coffee. I'm so late. Oh, Jesus, it's burning. I love this thing. That was awesome. Are these forgotten car accessories ancient crap or treasures that we should bring back? All right, Justin, our first product is a turn signal reminder flasher. The thinking with this product is, is that people at the time were not used to turning off their turn signals when they got a car that had them. This product right here lets you know that your blinker is still on. Helps prevent accidents two ways. Way number one is it flashes warning if your turn signals are still on after the turn has been completed, because we know it's a dangerous situation right there. The second way it helps keep you safe, Justin, is uh, it warns you when your turn signals aren't working either. That was important because at the time, turn signals weren't the most reliable. Drivers might turn on their indicator and be confident in their turn, but a bulb could be out, and they would have no way of knowing if other drivers couldn't see they were turning, except for maybe their eyes. Kind of ahead of its time. As we know, most of our cars have turn signal indicators in them now. And so people still leave them on. <laughs> people still leave them and on. And people also just don't use them. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's nice. It, is it metal? Oh. It's metal. So <laughs> let's go put it on a car. Let's, uh, let's, let's get to blinking. Let's do it. Let's get the blinking, Let's get to blinking. Call me a blinking. So our little relay right here, gonna gingerly pull it out. Oh. There we go. All right, Justin, go ahead and hold on to that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Boom. Hey, the red light's on. Oh, look at that. All right, so it's blinking. Oh, that one doesn't work. Yeah, I think. The bulb's out. I think that's a known issue with this car, which but. Is, which is probably why this is glowing red. So it does work. It tells us when we're blinking and it tells us when it's broken. That's pretty cool, I'm, I'm happy this works. Takes me back. It does, takes me back. Our next product is a category that still exists today, but this is an old version of it. It is called the Fuzz Buster 3. It's a <laughs> radar detector. The thinking is we plug this thing into our cigarette lighter and it detects radar beams being shot at the vehicle. Yeah. You know, meant to make sure you don't get speeding tickets. Warning indicator light. Check your speed when this lights up. There's radar in the area. Okay, cool. So it's just a general thing. Yes. It's not necessarily right at you. I assume this is the receptacle. Yeah, that goes uh, out the, the glass. Receiver. This is what's detecting the radar uh, beams. And it's, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, there's a light right here, speaker right here, and this is your gain knob right here. Got the fuzz buster, gonna turn the car on so it gets power and... Jesus. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. It's picking it up. Weird. Okay, so when I turn the sensitivity knob up, it doesn't detect the radar waves anymore, which is kind of strange. I here, let me uh, step over here. Okay. Yeah. Now let me point away. No. 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 Yeah. All right, so it only detects it when the radar gun is being pointed directly at the unit, uh, which is kind of concerning. So let's go ahead and try to evade the law here. Overall, I don't think I would trust the fuzz buster to bust any fuzz these days. It didn't detect you until I was like right next to you. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. It's too bad because it is a cool little unit. You know, this yeah. is the early version this the of this tech. Version. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. There's better versions of it now that do work as we've seen in previous videos. But Fuzz Buster. Leave it in the past. Uh, Old tech. Okay, Nolan, you got me out here on the road. What's our next product? Well, Justin, we might be on the road, but I am feeling homesick. So we're gonna test some home products for your car. Oh. Pass me the first one. That's it. <laughs> This is a shaver. What are you trying to tell me, Nolan? Oh, I'm gonna shave myself. I forgot to shave this morning. Plug this into our cigarette lighter here. Oh. It doesn't sound very powerful. Oh, here you go. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think it's working very well. The viewer, you can tell me if that looks any different. I don't think it does. It doesn't, it doesn't. It just looks more red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I don't know. What do you think, Justin? Ancient crap or take me back? Uh, definitely ancient crap. Yeah, this thing's not very good. All right, Justin, our next product is the Hank Craft Baby Bottle Warmer. What? Yeah, dude. <laughs> it plugs right into your 12 volt there and it keeps baby bottles warm. Oh, oh, what? Oh, God. Do not put that in your mouth, Justin. We got a bottle of some sort of milk here. So let's go ahead and put that into the warmer. Plug this in, hope it doesn't short out our electrical system. We're gonna let this warm up here. So okay. here we go. So it's definitely warm on the bottom. Uh, the bottle itself that we have is a little cold, so it's probably gonna take a little while to warm it up, but like this thing's working and it smells like rubber's burning and the wire is getting hot. It smells like something's getting hot. Maybe not the right thing. Yeah. I don't know anything about children. Oh geez, it's burning. It is burning. Yep, it's burning, it's smoking. There's uh -oh. smoke coming out of the, there's Ooh. smoke coming out. <laughs> Uh, Looks like it was burning the bottom there, the bottle. If you're a parent on the move in the 1960s, I think this thing works. Might smoke a little bit, but takes me back. This next product, Justin. Is, what you got for me, Nolan? This is the auto coffee maker. Is so automotive coffee maker or makes coffee automatically? It's both, Justin. Oh. Boils water for preparing instant coffee in your automobile, truck, van, trailer, boat, etc. Boils? It. That sounds dangerous. Very safe. It's already hard enough to drink anything while you're driving. I mean, you know, it's a distraction. Ooh. Ah. Well, let's just see if it boils water. Okay. Anything happening? Not yet. This is such a stupid product. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine someone like on the way to work. I gotta shave and make yeah. my coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'm so late. I mean, it is getting warmer. <laughs> that was some cool water that I put in there and it's starting to get a little warmer. From certain angles, you can see heat waves coming off of the uh, heating element. All right, it's somewhat boiling. So we're gonna start the coffee making process here. I know this isn't how you make coffee necessarily. Mmm, doesn't that look so good, Justin? Oh, Jesus, it's leaking out the bottom where the cord comes in. Okay, we're stopping this. Oh, it's really leaking now. Oh no. And it's now currently leaking out the cord area. <laughs> the cord plugs in. I hope it wasn't like that new. All right, we're gonna throw this thing in the trash. Where it belongs. That's right, okay. I think it's pretty safe to say you should just do your home stuff at home and not in the car. We've been talking about a lot of old stuff today, Justin, but if you want to listen to an automotive history podcast, I've got one for you. It's called Past Gas. I host it, James hosts it, Joe hosts it. You can get it wherever you get your podcasts. It's like hanging out in the garage, listening to your buddies tell a great story from automotive history. All right, Justin, this next product is called the Turnpike Toll Gun. It's for shooting coins? That's exactly what it is. This is a coin shooter? This is the coolest packaging we've probably ever had. Look at this. Oh my Turnpike goodness. Turnpike Toll Gun. Load it, cock it, shoot it. Look at this. So remove oh. magazine. Okay. Oh. oh. Yo. Oh. We're gonna load this thing up. Back before the little sensors in your window, you didn't want to have That's to have really a, a, a toll person in every single toll booth. What you would do, you just throw change into a little basket, rolls down, counts it, and then the gate opens, right? If you don't have enough change, the gate won't That's open. Sick. Dude, really? this thing is like pretty nice. It's metal too. It's That's all the metal. cool thing about old products. It's like. This thing can live on a shelf for a long time. Dude, Justin, go ahead and uh, I think you push that back and just pull the trigger. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna shoot the trash can, okay. ready? Okay, so. Think about you're it. You're in the driver's side, you're it's, like, the driver's it's like three feet away. The thing is over there. Yeah. There you go. That's pretty good. Wow, fire rate's pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm out. Dang, that was fast. That's pretty that was good. That was $9 in less than a minute. Only $5.95. This was five bucks? This You can get this material for five bucks right <laughs> That's now. That's true, man. I love this thing. This is so cool. This takes me back, Justin. How about you? Ah, uh, that definitely takes me back. Yeah. Cool. Very cool product. For our next product, what we have is called the Auto Parker. It's supposed to help you parallel park with the curb by giving you a reference to put a line with the curb. And the goal is to turn the car to where this is parallel with the curb. That's when you know to cut your wheels to come back into the spot. So, Nolan is going to parallel park the E36 with this thing stuck on the windshield and no mirrors. 
That's the challenge, no mirrors. So what you're supposed to do is find the center of the vehicle and put this there. <laughs> Sick. There we go. All right, Nolan's gonna give this thing a shot. Don't use those mirrors, don't look back. I'm not. That's parallel. Pretty good, honestly. I mean, I'm pretty far from the curb. I did it! We, we did it! That thing's great! <laughs> Every car should have that. That was so easy. You know, a lot of cars nowadays, they have sensors and cameras to help you park, but if your car is old like mine, get something like that. So what do you think, Nolan? Leave it in the past or bring it back? We are bringing this thing back, Justin. Yeah? That thing is a great product. Hell yeah. Next, next product. This next product, Justin, is not a holster. This is an antique brake testing kit. Let's open it up. Whoa. Yeah, look at this apparatus. Whoa. Huh? I need a degree to work on that. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, Justin, I have no clue what I'm looking at here. Me neither, Nolan. <laughs> oh. A video from 1928 has been presented to us to hopefully describe <laughs> how this thing works. All right, truck pulling up next to the motorcycle. I believe it's being pulled over by a police officer. Oh. So, so this is a cop testing thing? Uh, Ma'am, I don't think your brakes work. <laughs> Introducing the decelerometer, a new device for determining the number of feet required to stop a moving vehicle. So he's doing a roadside inspection on this lady. Yeah, he clamped it to the rocker yeah. or the step board. And he's gonna make her drive. He's riding he's on the riding side. On the, the That's not safe. Runner. That's crazy. Yeah, he could see how long it took for her to stop at 20 mile an hour. Yeah, it was a roadside inspection. He's putting an inspection sticker on. Inspected. Wow. How mad would you be if if this dude came up to you <laughs> yeah. and was just like, I'm inspecting your vehicle right now. I'm clamping this contraption onto the side to see if your brakes work. I mean, brakes sucked back then. Yeah, they and, did. And, uh, Maybe it was a necessary public safety kind of deal. I don't know. It would be very annoying though, yeah. that's for sure. Um, I mean, this video is from 1928, so I'm gonna guess it's from 1928. Wow. That's almost a hundred year old. How much Dang, did so this antique. cost? Man, that thing is vintage though. It's cool, man. Speaking of vintage, we're bringing back a bunch of old donut merch, like that's from right. my time. Like this hoodie. That hoodie. Keep a look out on the donut merch shop. All right, let's go uh, test this weird thing out and uh, see if your car passes inspection. Oh no, not my truck. Boom. 24. That says 15. Interesting. So it's a little off. Doesn't really work. I mean, you know, it's almost 100 years old. And think about it, cars didn't accelerate as fast as this. No, they didn't have disc brakes either. So this thing's probably like going, holy crap. Yeah, exactly. Those probably. are some good drums on there. Definitely don't bring it back. Don't bring it back. Please don't. Thank you so much for watching this video. Go to donutmedia.com, get yourself a hoodie like Justin or a t-shirt like me. Don't play with old electronics. No. Subscribe to the channel. See you later. Y'all have a good one.